Okay, so in this problem we're told how many revolutions per minute would a 22 meter diameter Ferris wheel need to make for the passengers to feel weightless at the topmost point. So in this problem we're going to be solving for uh, RPM, revolutions per minute. And so the way we're going to do this is by starting with the free body diagram of what the person would be feeling um, if they were up here at the top because that's what they say at the top. And so what we want to do is label the forces acting on them. So we know there's going to be uh, two forces. So we have the force due to gravity, mg. And so mg is going to point down. This is the force due to gravity. And then the other force is going to be the normal force, which the person is going to feel by sitting on their seat. So if they're on a seat like this, we know that there's going to be a normal force pointing up just perpendicular to where they're sitting. And so we're going to assume that this is the y. And the way we're going to do this is by summing the forces along this direction. So if we take the sum of the forces in the y, uh, where this is the y-axis, we know it's going to be equal to mar, where uh, ar is the centripetal acceleration because we're going in a circle like this. So that's why we're using centripetal acceleration. And so mar is going to be equal to the sum of the forces. Now, we have two forces, mg and f sub n. And when you do a problem like this where you're rotating, uh, you want to uh, call the forces that are going into the are pointing towards the inside of the circle uh, positive and outside would be negative. So this would be mg minus f sub n. But keep in mind uh, what they're saying for this problem. We're trying to find uh, the revolutions per minute would make for the uh, in order for the passengers to feel weightless. Now, what does it mean for someone to be weightless? It effectively means for this problem that the normal force is going to be zero. So we want to make them feel like they're not even on anything. So there's going to be no normal force pushing up against them, kind of like they're just like floating in air. So when we solve this problem, the normal force is going to be equal to zero. So this value is just going to be zero. So MAR is going to be equal to uh, MG here. But notice that uh, A sub R, you should know, or the centripetal acceleration, is equal to the velocity squared divided by the radius. So this is the ultimate reason why we're doing this, is we need to be able to find the velocity. And then if we can get the velocity, we can convert that into uh, omega, which is your angular velocity, because we know that V equals R omega, and then omega is in radians per second. And we can convert radians per second into uh, revolutions per minute. So that's kind of the thing we're doing. So we're summing the forces in order to solve for the velocity. Then we're going to convert the velocity into this uh, radians per second, and then convert the units into revolutions per minute. So hopefully that makes sense and you get an understanding of why we're actually doing this. So the m's are just going to cancel here since it's on both sides. And then a sub r is equal to v squared over r is just going to be equal to g. So solving for your r, you would just multiply both sides. And then we would have v squared equals gr. Then you would square root both sides. So v equals the square root of gr. And now all we got to do is really just plug in. So uh, v equals the square root. Uh, g, you should just know, is uh, the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. Multiplying that by the radius, so we know the diameter of the Ferris wheel is uh, 22 meters, so the radius is just half of that value, right, to here. So it would be 11 meters. So plugging that in, we know our velocity is going to be equal to the square root of 9.8 times 11 that's going to give you V equals 10.38. And then obviously it's meters per second. We're using velocity. Um, and then now what we're going to want to do is convert into radians per second, which takes the velocity. And then you would just divide by the radius here uh, to get it. So once again, the velocity is 10.38. Uh, and then you're dividing by the radius, which is 11. So I'm going to use the exact value of my calculator here you will get 0.94, let's just say 9439, uh, and then this is gonna be radians per second. And so now we have it in, uh, we have omega, so all we have to do is calculate uh, the amount of revolutions per minute now. So um, solving for this, you should know that one, or sorry, two pi radians is the same as one revolution. So you kind of remember like the unit circle all the way around is two pi, so. One revolution is two pi radians. So that's our radians. And then they want it in minutes, not seconds. So converting from seconds to minutes, we know 60 seconds is equal to one minute. 
So doing this, you'll have 0.9439. Uh, you're dividing by 2 times pi here. And then you would multiply by 60. So you're going to get that it equals 9.01, uh, about 9.01. And then the units are going to be revolutions per minute. So uh, this is going to be your answer. So when they say how many revolutions per minute are, are going to be required for the passengers to feel weightless, it's this many. So 9.01 revolutions per minute, which is pretty fast. Um, but yeah, so just summarizing how we solve for this. Uh, basically, whenever you do a problem like this, dealing with something in a circle like this, uh, you're going to be using a centripetal acceleration, summing the forces, and then we used it to sub in the velocity. Then we used the velocity to solve for uh, omega or the angular velocity, and then just converted the units. So uh, yeah, so this is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this useful.